This video will show you how to wire a motorized ball valve into the W600 controller. Now I'm kind of starting the video at the end where everything is wired in to show you the difference between the motorized ball valve and a solenoid valve. I have the ball valve, the motorized ball valve wired into relay number one and the solenoid valve into relay number two. So if I turn relay number one on, You can actually hear the motor energizing and opening up the valve. When I turn it off, it energizes again and closes the valve. Whereas the solenoid valve uses the solenoid to open and close the valve. The valve I'm wiring to the controller is a Worcester motorized ball valve. If I take off the cover, you'll see the wires inside here, and inside the cover is the wiring diagram. Now I know from the wiring diagram that this is a neutral wire, and here's where you land the two hot wires that will be going back to the controller. So what I did is I made a wiring harness, since um, the valves typically don't come with um, extension cable or extension wires, and I wired up the valve in accordance to the wiring diagrams from the manufacturer. And then I run the rest of the harness back to the controller. Okay, the motorized ball valve is wired to the controller and I've also wired a sensor, a connectivity sensor to the controller. I have a set point of 1300 and a dead band of 100. And right now the connectivity is at 900. I'll put it in the higher conductivity water and you'll, the valve should open up. And it'll stay open until it gets below the set point minus the dead band or below 1200, which of course it will. And then the valve closes. And so you notice there's a longer time between open and close and close and open than the solenoid valve. So you need to keep that in mind when you're programming your set point and your dead band. 